Hey guys, let's get more news about SAN Francisco 49ers, but first don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Stanford's Christian McCaffrey, Justin Reed to meet in Super Bowl. Las Vegas will have a Stanford Cardinal football reunion in two weeks now that the Super Bowl matchup is official. Only this time, they won't be in the same locker room. These Cardinal alums will be opponents. The San Francisco 49ers rode the legs and power of Christian McCaffrey past the Detroit Lions 34-31 in an epic NFC title game that saw the Niners down 24-7. He was also joined by former Stanford linebacker Curtis Robinson in the run to the George Hallis NFC Champion Trophy. McCaffrey led the way for the 49ers with 20 carries for 90 yards and two touchdowns in the win over the Lions, adding to the 17 carries for 98 yards and two touchdowns he had in the divisional round win over Green Bay. But now, McCaffrey will face his former Stanford teammate Justin Reed, who's making his second straight trip to the big game. Reed played on a Kansas City Chiefs defense that bottled potential most valuable player winner Lamar Jackson to only 54 rushing yards and forced two takeaways in the 17-10 win over the Baltimore Ravens to win the AFC Championship. Reed collected three solo tackles and one sack on a delayed safety blitz call. The former Houston Texan has reached the Super Bowl in both of his first two seasons with the Chiefs. He claimed a Super Bowl ring last season in a 38-35 win over the Philadelphia Eagles in which he had seven tackles. McCaffrey isn't just making his first Super Bowl trip, but history will be on his side. Only one Stanford running back has won a Super Bowl ring, Scott Laidlaw, who won with the Dallas Cowboys in 1977. Reed, meanwhile, will look to join John Elway as past Cardinal players who won back-to-back -back titles. We're less than a week away from the April 16 opening of the college football spring transfer portal window, which will give players a two-week period from April 16 to 30 to enter their names into the portal. After a winter portal cycle that saw Oregon, Notre Dame and about 20 other Power 4 schools land turnkey starting quarterbacks, don't expect much high-level quarterback action during this window. Simply put, most of the Power Four teams that were in search of a new starting quarterback filled that need during the winter window. Also, while there may end up being a surprise entry or a couple exceptions, the current expectation in the college football personnel world is that the majority of quarterbacks that enter the portal these next few weeks will be backup guys for their current teams. NFL analyst throws cold water on Brandon Ayuk trade request denial. While San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Brandon Ayuk hasn't requested a trade, he doesn't need to as pro football talks Mike Florio wrote on Monday. This all came on the heels of a trade request rumor surfacing over the weekend before Ayuk's agent, Ryan Williams, shut it down. Florio called the rumor strange but increasingly common kerfuffle in the modern NFL on social media. Instead, Ayuk's actions on social media say more than the writer whom Williams specifically called out on X, formerly Twitter. Ayuk turned heads on April 12 when he unfollowed the 49ers on Instagram, a move that's common before a trade. With Ayuk unfollowing the 49ers on social media, any team that has any interest in Ayuk has reason to call the 49ers, Florio wrote. Several weeks ago, such calls were met, we're told, with a response that Ayuk isn't available, Florio added. At this point, with the draft 10 days ago and the situation still unresolved, why not make the call again? Ayuk has been persistent about landing a new contract ever since the Super Bowl ended. Both sides are not close in negotiations either, according to NFL Network's Mike Garafalo on March 30th. The 49ers have a fifth-year option for Ayuk worth $14.12 million, but that's much less than his spot-track market value of $24 million per year. Ayuk will become a free agent in 2025 if he doesn't sign a new deal this year. The biggest challenge for the 49ers and Ayuk will be setting his number. He presumably, and justifiably, will want the same deal the 49ers gave to receiver Debo Samuel, at a minimum, Florio wrote. 
Samuel made similar off-season waves with the 49ers in 2022 before he signed a three-year, $71.55 million deal. He even unfollowed the 49ers on Instagram before the deal that year. Florio pointed out that the 49ers could be eyeing a trade as an option for Ayuk if a deal can't be done. There's also reason to believe that, even though Ayuk hasn't requested a trade, conversations might be happening to determine whether other team, S, are interested in making a deal, with the knowledge and approval of the 49ers, Florio wrote. That could be useful to the 49ers. It could give both sides useful information as to what his market might be. It makes sense for the 49ers to figure this out now. Pay Ayak or trade him to someone who will, and get 2024 draft pick compensation for him, Florio added. If the 49ers trade Ayak, it will take a significant draft capital as Florio sees it. The best case scenario is that they'd flip Ayak for a rookie who ends up being pretty good, too. And then they'll have to pay him or trade him and do it all over again, Florio wrote. San Francisco could get another first round pick for Ayak but that would realistically fall in the bottom half of the round. Top receivers such as Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors look out of reach, but the 49ers could land Romo Duns or Brian Thomas Jr. whether or not either receiver could make up for Ayak's absence remains the question. Ayak had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons with 75 or more catches and 7 or more touchdowns. 49ers making Brandon Ayuk trade difficult for Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers are serious about acquiring a veteran wide receiver for Russell Wilson to throw to and George Pickens to work with. To this point, Brandon Ayuk has been the name to watch, but NFL Network's Ian Rappaport says things aren't going as smoothly as believed. Speaking on NFL Total Access, Rappaport said the San Francisco 49ers have received multiple phone calls about an IAC trade, but to this point, none have been entertained. Now, as far as the trade request, I would agree with his agent. There has been no trade request, Rappaport said. Obviously there have been some teams though who know that all is not well and know that he wants a contract extension. Some receiver-needy teams have acquired over the last several months to see if he could be available. To my knowledge, the 49ers have not entertained any of those talks. According to team sources, the Steelers have engaged in talks for Ayuk and continue to be confident they have a shot at landing him. They may have to wait until the 49ers give up on a contract extension before making it happen now that the team remains firm with their position. Ayak is coming off back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons and is only costing any team $14 million this year. He'll be looking for a contract extension worth roughly $30 million per season, making his future with any team, including the Steelers, questionable. Still, Pittsburgh would like to add a reliable name to their offense before the offseason is over. And you, fan, what do you think of the situation of Brandon Ayak? Leave your opinion in the comments.